Hey everyone, so welcome back to part two of the scatter plot. Here we're going to focus on uh, how to create different um, styles of the graph using facet row and everything under it. These are very important parameters because they're going to allow you to do many different things with the scatter plot that you've not, not seen up to now. Um, first of all, before we do this, actually unhashtag this and just hashtag out the color and the size size table size do only those two and run the graph and see what happens when we do that we're going to um, try to differentiate the data by day and table size so as you can see you have uh, the colors are here of the different days and then you have the sizes of the of the graphs or the markers um, that are different according to the table size now this is sometimes hard to see because there's a lot of information on one little graph so in order to avoid that, one thing you can do is say, you know what, I don't want the size to be table size. I don't want it to have a legend there. What I want to do is I want to divide it up into different uh, rows. Here we're going to do, let's say, table size. Let's do table size here instead of smoke. So I want to divide up into rows. And now this will allow you to create vertical uh, subplots in the vertical direction, meaning in rows. Eat one for each table size. So we should have six different rows because we have six different table sizes. From it's not it's not organized, it's not ordered. So it's the table size equals two, here it equals three, four, one. And now you can see it's just a lot easier to 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 see because you have one legend with the colors, and then each row has a different table size. So these facets, facet row and facet um, uh, you know, column, it's just a lot easier to use when you have a lot of data that you want the user to, to look at. So you did that for rows. Now let's do that for um, for columns. Now we'll have six different columns because we have six different table table sizes. So here, okay, you see six different columns. You see that, for example, column with table size one, there's only four different um, markers, and there's two red ones, meaning two Saturdays and one Thursday, and one Friday. Um, now, you, let's say you don't want six different columns. Just, you see how it's very narrow, it's hard to look at? What you can do is use facet column wrap, and this will allow you to uh, say the maximum columns you want for each, for each row. All right. So now you can see, because I put facet column wrap three, each row is only going to have three columns. So now you have uh, table size one, two, all the way to six, but you have um, only um, three columns on top and three columns on the bottom. It's just another way of playing around with it. Um, call it facet column wrap. Again, you can only use if, uh, if you don't have facet row. You cannot set this. This has to be hashed out or just none. Um, and this always goes with this. The column wrap always has to go with a fa facet column. It's just another way of limiting the number of columns you have when you use facet column. In case you have like 10 columns, you don't want 10 columns on a screen. You probably want to have, let's say, 3, 3, 3, and 1, or 5 and 5, so it makes it easier to look at. All right, let's hashtag these out. The next thing we're going to look at is marginal rug and marginal box, marginal X and Y, sorry. <clears throat> what these are, these are subplots that are drawn to visualize the axis distribution. What, is, what does that mean? Let's look. And actually you have four options. You can do rug, box, violin, and histograms. Because these are graphs to visualize distributions. Only those options. Let me close some of these tabs so they don't bother us. Okay. So as you can see, we have um, on the... On the x-axis, we drew a rug distribution, and on the y-axis, we drew a box plot. And this is exactly what we got here. On the y-axis is a box plot, so you can see all these boxes by day, because that's our, our um, I think, color. Um, and on the x-axis, you can see a rug plot that's also going to give you the total bill. So let's try to analyze this or see better what it means. Here is telling me about the blue one, which is Sunday, the max, um, what is blue? Well, what is the Y? It's actually looking at tips, right? So the max tip is 6.5, as you can see here. 6.5 is the highest one. And 
the max tip for the purple which is a Friday is 4.73 where is that purple is probably somewhere around here 4.73 right and it always tells you the minimum and tells the median if you want to go into a box plot, I'm going to soon do a video on the box plot so you can learn all about what a box, box plot means and the uh, marginal X as you saw here the marginal uh, X is is a distribution of a rug plot so a rug plot will also allow you to see the highest one in the Sunday is um, 48.17 why is that because that's the total bill and the highest total bill is 48.17 the highest total bill for red which is Saturday is actually 50.81 and that's what you see 50.81 so it's another cool way a rug plot is another cool way to see the distribution of the marks and you can see that there's a lot more red and greens than there are of purples which is Friday just cool ways of seeing a lot of things very easily with one simple graph okay so now let's go back to the next parameter which is trend line again remember in the last video I showed everybody you can go into click on the link below to open plotly express clatter and you'll see all the parameters here that we're going to go over okay let's actually minimize this all right so the next one is uh, um, we're actually going to draw a regression line for for scientists or data analysts and know what they're doing OLS and low s is different ways to to um, draw regression lines uh, to use this um, code line you need to import stats models which is this I import stats models at API as SM so that will allow you to create this um, create this use this regression line and let's see what it gives us you see there is a regression line for each color if I actually took the day out if I took this out color I would just have one regression line but because I said give me the color for each day I have four different regression lines which is kind of cool because it shows you um, the trend or the correlation degree which is very positive here for each uh, color for each day all right let's take this out now let's look at log we're just going to look at log x in this case this is again for data analysts um, uh, this is how to use uh, gives you the possibility to use a logarithm to plot your data and it allows you to plot data on a logarithm scale I think base 2 and you really want to use this again if you're a data scientist you probably know a lot more about this if not that's fine um, you really want to use logarithm when you have for a couple of reasons one of the reasons I know is if you have a data point that's very much very much larger or smaller than the other data points it's like very far away then you want to use a logarithm because scaling because it will help you uh, visualize the data uh, um, a lot more neatly a lot more easier it will make sense so we'll on hashtag this same thing with log y you can do that as well the last thing for data analytics is an error bar and this is an error bar um, error bars are used to measure um, errors they can measure um, margin of error they can measure sta standard deviation 95 percent interval whatever you want to measure um, in this case uh, we're just I'm doing a fake uh, margin of error I'm just dividing this column of total bill by 100 and dividing this column by 40 to give us the error margin of error that the plus and then uh, the minus again I'm not you don't have to do it this way if, if you if you know what you're doing you know what confidence intervals mean and you know what standard deviation means so you'll have that for each marker and this is the way you can plot it you just plot it using uh, error y or error y minus on the if you want to plot the y um, the y axis so as you can see you have error bars here um, for each marker again for this plot it doesn't make a lot of sense but this allows you to do that remember that you can use only if you want to you can use only error y which will give you both plus and minus but if you use minus then you can use error y minus and you this will be considered the plus and this will be considered the minus meaning this will be considered the plus anything above the marker and this anything below is considered the minus but for this to work again you just need to make sure you have them on your data on your excel sheet as a column before you actually plot them all right let's go into the a little bit more into the styling so let's open all of these let's do let's actually do all of oh, hashtag uh, all of these 
save and load. So let's see what kind of things we get with all these styling capabilities. This is a lot, but they're very cool. Make these smaller, close them. Okay. So first of all, the, we'll start with the first one. First one is the label. This is a parameter that allows you to map the labels. Here you can decide, I want the tip, any label that has a tip on it, I want it to be called the tip. And we, if you remember correctly, the Y axis was called tip. So now it's not called tip anymore, it's called the tip. The legend was called, oh, now we're not, we're not using smoker, so it doesn't matter. But if we use smoke, let's say, instead of color day, we would put smoke. is smoker or not. Why? Because I said the smoker instead of that label I want it to be called smoker or not. So that's another way to change the legend label if you want um, to smoker or not. Okay so these are different ways to change any label that are related to the graph you can you can call them in a different name if you want. The title we're going to call it all tips and that's why you see the title is all tips right here. Then we're going to look at height or width. Width is going to be 500 pixels, height 1,000. That's why you see it in this odd way. It's 500 in the width and 1,000 pixels um, on the height. And then template. I chose Plotly Dark, and this is how Plotly Dark looks like. But there are many different templates, and they're all of these that you can choose instead of Plotly Dark. And you can look at them right here. These are the built-in templates, and these are all the types. And it will show you each one of them when you go below what each type looks like. This is plotly white, plotly dark, and so on and so on. Okay, so let's um, hashtag these out again and go to the last um, parameters that we have. Unhashtag these and unhashtag these, these two. Save it. This is always going to be hashtagged out and I'll tell you why in a sec. Okay, so what is this creating these four parameters we are creating an animated chart. And I love these animated charts. This chart I've created before is an animated scatter plot and there's a racing bar chart in the videos above. You can see in the card above other ways of creating animated plots. So here I actually said that the animation frame I want it to be the table size. And remember that we have six table sizes, one through six. So for each table um, size, we're going to have a different graph. For table size number one, we're going to have this graph, which has three different um, markers. Table number two, we had a lot more markers, and so on and so on. But it's built in, in, a, in an animated frame. So if you pull play, push play, you could see it run by from each, um, each frame. You could see how they change. But in order to do this, um, not only do you have to create the, you have to say the table size is going to be part of the, the animation frame, you have to set your range. If you don't set your X range the set of each axis, the X axis and the Y axis, it's not going to look good. I did 5 to 50 because I know that the total tip is anywhere from, I should I could put zero, there is a total tip I think of three dollars. Um, so I know that um, the total tip doesn't, the, the highest tip doesn't go above 50 and the total tip doesn't go below five, I think, so I put 5 to 50. The y-axis, I know that the least total bill, uh, sorry, um, tip is I think 1, and the highest is 10, so I just put 0 to 10. You always have to set them in order for this to work uh, properly. If not, it will be jumpy and you won't be able to see all the marks. Because uh, Plotly will set it by default, which usually doesn't, doesn't work out. So I set these according to the data, and then I, or I organize the the data frame by the column table size because the table size of the data frame did not start with one. I, I think it started with five or four, three and then five and then two. So I said set the data frame, order it by, by from one to six table size. And that's what you have here. It starts from one, it goes all the way up to six. If I did not have this set, then I think it would have, it would be four, five, one, two, three. It will be different. Okay, so that's another way to do it. I mean, you actually have to do it if you want it to be, if you want to be set out. And the last thing I do is kind of like a bonus is um, you go in deep into the, 
into the uh, code and you can see especially if you print scatterplot.layout you can see there's different options there I went into update menus the first item of the of the list and buttons and the first item of buttons all the way to frame duration and I chose frame duration 1000 milliseconds which is one second and transition duration only half a second what does this mean this means that from this point from going from one to two is going to wait one Mississippi and from two to three another another 1000 milliseconds so one Mississippi two Mississippi three Mississippi four Mississippi that's the frame that's what it means here frame duration one second now the transition is half a second transition means how fast the markers change from this to the next marker so that only takes half a second you see let's do this again these movements only take half a second the the, the markers from from moving from one figure to the next only takes half a second okay so these are all the things we've now learned all the things you can do within the scatter plot and all the parameters that you can play around with and a little bit of a bonus you've you've had here of how you can go into the uh, transition frames within animation frame and play around with uh, the time intervals between uh, frames and between duration so I hope you enjoyed. Please click the like button if you if you uh, found value in, value in what you've learned, and um, please subscribe below. Each week you're going to get a new video on different graphs, plots, and data visualizations that you can do all in Python, all the way to creating very complex um, dashboards for whatever field you're in. Um, so as we know, we're going through a coronavirus pandemic right now. And uh, one thing I would ask you is obviously please stay safe, wash your hands, uh, stay indoors if you can, and don't come into contact with people, um, especially if you are if you have to be near people, make sure you keep at least six feet of a distance um, and try to always stay, uh, stay clean and safe. Um, at, when it comes to data, there's a lot of um, plots and, and graphs out there and maps about coronavirus. If you want to play around with it a little bit, what you could do is you can go into the um, CDC uh, government website. And let me actually make this bigger. And you can search under this link, coronavirus, and it'll give you, the first hit will give you... Um, uh, this severe acute respiratory syndrome associated with coronavirus disease and you can go into it's a data data set it can tell you all about the data set all about the columns here below but you can also export it into a csv and then just put this csv into a pandas data frame just like i did here above you see how i did i put everything into well here i didn't do but i put everything into a you can do a pandas data frame uh, csv and you can see that in different videos and then you can play around with it you can play around with the data just like we play around with the columns and rows of this data um, so another cool way of playing around with data that you'll see a lot of people doing so um, out there as well um, and creating different plots you can create coral a coral pleth map or a, a map a scatter map box i have videos on that on the upper right corner where you can go into it and see how you can create um, data on those kind of maps um, in this case, you can use a coronavirus to help educate yourself and educate other people about the different infections, how fast they're spreading, and, and how to avoid um, you know, places where they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of people infected with the virus. Again, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button. I hope you subscribe so every week you'll see a new video on different data visualizations and how you can become an expert data analyst in Python. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a good week. Thank you.